Hey guys, it's your friend John here. And remember a while ago I made a dollar store weapon? I called it the best dollar store weapon ever made. Well today, I'm going to be putting that to the test because I'm going to make another dollar store weapon, only this time I'm going to make it much better than the first dollar store weapon I made. Now you're probably wondering, what's this amazing weapon I'm going to be making at a dollar store material so good it's going to be better than my first dollar store weapon? Well today, I'm going to be making a push sword, or a push dagger, wrist sword, wrist dagger, but you can call it either one. I'm calling it a push sword, and the first thing you need to make this weapon is two plungers from the dollar store. The second thing you need is a knife from a dollar store, mainly a longer knife. And the third thing you need is some form of cord, cotton cord, something to wrap it around. Those are the four main things you need to make this weapon. So first thing, I'm going to peel the sticker off. I got the handle all wet to help loosen up that sticker and it seems to be coming off now after a very long time of trying to get it off. Alright, I got the sticker all off. I take this part off. Now it looks good. And I get to do it all over again but with this handle. Give me another two hours. Once we get both stickers off on both handles, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to cut this end off right here with the screw shred because it looks a little ugly. So now I'm just going to cut it right off. So I got it marked out right here just under 13 centimeters. And that's going to be for my handle for my push sword so I have something to grab on. Now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to sand down these edges right here and up here to make it more smooth and level and more even so it's not crooked. So in order to get this knife out of this handle, what you gotta do is you gotta crack this open, this handle open, and the way you're gonna do that is you're gonna take a knife and a hammer, you put the knife right in here, like in there, you just put it in there. Once you have your knife in that area, you just hammer it and hammer and just keep on going until you can pop it off. So once the knife is out of the handle, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to drill a hole here and I might drill another hole here in the back of the blade just so it has more stability so when I put it into this handle, the knife won't be loose and will have more anchor points to connect it so it won't break out. Now I got my knife anchored in, I got nails here and here and here just so as I'm drilling it, it won't move or spin around and I'm going to drill it here and here and I'm going to use this wood peg that I got at the dollar store and I'm going to use a drill bit that closely remembers the size of the peg that I'm going to be using to anchor it in. But before you start drilling with the main drill bit, use a smaller drill bit to help start it out. So when you go in the bigger drill bit, it has a little indent here and a little bit indent there that you made with the smaller drill bit. It just makes things a lot easier. Because I was having such a hard time drilling in it, I'm going to use this special type of drill bit for drilling into metal. And I also sprayed just a little bit of oil on here so I had the lubricant so when it spins, it spins easily. Now I finished getting the two holes in and they were very difficult to do. I strongly recommend if you do buy a knife, buy one that already has holes in it so you don't have to drill it. And I'm not going to use this big peg, it's just too fat, it won't fit in that hole. I'm going to use a smaller peg to fit in this hole, and then I got a tiny one for this hole right here. 
So my next step is I drew a line right here and I'm going to take a saw and I'm going to cut this wood so I can open the wood up so I can have a nice gap in there so I can put this knife in then I can put my pegs in and then I can have it all anchored together once I close everything up. That should be good. And it fits in nicely. So I put pencil marks where I'm going to drill the hole. And you can see it matches up perfectly with this knife holes. And now I'm going to drill it in. And I'm going to use a drill bit that closely resembles the wood peg that I'm going to be anchoring it in. So make sure you have the proper size drill bit that fits it, that fits it tightly. So I finished drilling all my holes here to hold the knife and I also added an extra hole here where I can put my hand grip so my hand has something to grip on and I have all my pegs cut. And for my handle you can also see I put a hole in there as well so I can put this peg in here and add it to the other hole that I just drilled. It would look like this once the handle is in. Now I'm going to glue everything together with all my pegs. And also remember when you do cut your pegs make sure they're the proper length and size so they're not too short. If anything, have them a little longer so you can always sand them down so everything matches up evenly. To glue it all together, I'm going to use this 24 hour dry Gorilla Glue to hold it all in place. Put your knife in and make sure everything lines up. And put the glue in. So I got my peg glued into my handle so it's more secure and I also added some wood filler into this gap. That wood filler would just secure it a little bit more so it doesn't open up over time. Now I'm going to pour glue in this hole and I'm going to secure my handle. Alright, I got it all glued in. Once all the parts are put in place with the glue, Clamp it shut and let it dry for a full 24 hours. That will really secure the bond and it will also make sure the glue is 100% dry so it's nice and strong. I also added in some wood filler all around the handle so it looks nice and that wood filler will make it more strong and stable when being used. Once you're done letting the glue dry for a full 24 hours, take a file and just file down those pegs that are sticking out with a hand file. So as you can see, I have finished sanding down those wood pegs that were sticking out. It looks nice and smooth. It matches up perfectly with the wood handle. And I also did this bottom one down here as well. Along with the wood filler, the wood filler has been sanded down so it looks nice and smooth. As you can see in the before and after picture, there is a very clear difference. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to add some cotton cord here for the gripping for my hand. And I'm also going to add some cotton cord back here for my arm so it's nice and stable when I'm using it. Once you have your rope screwed or nailed into here, just start wrapping it around and make sure you pull it really, really tight so it doesn't get loose over time while you're using it. Once your cord is all on tightly, drill a small hole where the screw is going to go. And just put your screw in and just start screwing. There we go. Feels nice and comfortable. Before what I reveal what I just made, please remember to like the video if you enjoyed it. Leave a comment, let me know what you think. Subscribe if you're a new viewer. And if you want to help me get more viewers and possibly more subscribers, please share this video. And also, don't forget to hit the notification bell so you can be aware every time I upload a new video. And don't forget to check out my older videos as well. Now, back to the main video.
Here it is, all done. It looks amazing, it feels comfortable. I added a cord back here so my arm doesn't swing around. I got it tied up like that. You can very easily untie it and retie it just so your arm is more secure. The blade is secure, the handle is very comfortable. And wanna, this is really awesome looking for a dollar store weapon. Now, let's go outside and test it. It is freezing cold outside and it's also raining. This is not a good day to test a weapon. I got my weapon all done, it's strapped to my arm. I got Junkman Woody over here. I put a box in him. In that box, there's a water jug filled with water. I asked the youth the plunger to give him some extra protection on his chest. They kind of look like... I'm not going to say what they look like, but you get the point. Now I'm going to give this weapon a good strength test. So my overall thought on this weapon, for a weapon made out of Dollar Tree materials, it's actually really, really good. My only complaint is the knife is a little flimsy, but it's a Dollar Store knife. But other than that, it's pretty good. And another complaint would be tying it on and off can be very difficult. I only have one end to tie. It's screwed in right there, so there's only one point of t it being tied in. But other than really the knife being a little flimsy and tying it can be a bit of a headache, it's a pretty good weapon. And I can definitely say with a lot of confidence, this is the greatest dollar store weapon ever made. Now I know there's not a lot of dollar store weapon videos on YouTube or online, there's, I think just a few. But this is definitely the best, and not only that, but my other weapon that I made at the dollar store, that's also a really good weapon. But this one is definitely the best one ever made. I think what I'm going to have to do in the future is I'm going to have to make another weapon just like this, but instead of using cheap dollar store materials, I'm going to have to use high quality materials because I really do like this push sword. It's really cool. Even though the blade is a little short and people might give me a hard time saying it's not a true sword because of the blade length, you get the idea, you get the concept. So I'm going to wrap things up by saying thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. This is definitely the greatest dollar store weapon ever made. No debate and no doubt. And also, please be sure to follow me on Instagram and also on Reddit. Be sure to check out and join my community on Reddit. And please don't follow me in real life. That would just be a little creepy. Thank you.